Number 10, Justin Murdoch. In California on October 29th, 2021, the heir to the Dole food fortune, Justin Murdoch, attended a Halloween party with 24-year-old Talia Sky, his gorgeous young model girlfriend. The 49-year-old billionaire was arrested later that night after allegedly giving Talia a black eye. Sky had texted a friend earlier on in the party asking for a ride home from Justin's mansion in LA after she and her wealthy boyfriend had gotten into a heated argument. She told her friend that she was scared that Justin might hurt her after asking to leave the event early. By the time her friend arrived to pick Talia up, she was apparently laying down on the driveway, sobbing uncontrollably. Her face was battered and her eye had swollen up to twice its size with purple and blue bruises. When confronted over his lover's concerning state, Justin claimed that he had nothing to do with it and that Talia was drunk, crazy, and had most likely hurt herself. Justin had a complicated history when it came to women. He's dated celebrities and models in the past like Jamie Lynn Sigler and Ashley Shelton with some saying he'd made inappropriate comments and others going as far as claiming sexual harassment. His claims of innocence were supported by some of his friends that came to the party after Talia had asked to leave. They said that she had seemed upset but didn't have any marks on her. It's unclear whether she lied about the assault or not as information on the case is slowly being released to the public. Number 9. Thomas Gilbert Jr. In 2015, a spoiled rich kid killed his own father in cold blood after having his allowance cut. Thomas Gilbert Jr his father worked for a hedge fund and had the kind of money most people only dream of. Despite working for what he earned, his son didn't grow up to have that kind of mentality. One night, Thomas visited his parents' Manhattan home in January unannounced. When he got there, he immediately asked his mom, Shelly, to make him a sandwich. After she left, Thomas confronted his dad about cutting his allowance by 200 bucks. He was still getting money, over $2,000 a month, just not as much as he wanted. When the 30-year-old surfer didn't get the answer that he wanted, things took a turn for the worse. Shelly came back into the room to see her husband lying dead on the floor with a gunshot wound to his head. Thomas had set the scene up to look like a suicide, but no one had bought it. She quickly called the police saying, quote, my husband's been shot by my son. After his arrest, Thomas nonchalantly ate pizza and fast food, telling cops about his exercise routines and diets. Despite pleading not guilty in court, he was sentenced to 30 years to life for the murder of his father. Maybe now he'll finally realize you can't just expect to get everything you want in life. Number 8 tech billionaire. Henry T. Nicholas III founded a company called Broadcom that specializes in semiconductors and software. In 2018, the billionaire was arrested in Las Vegas after suitcases full of illegal drugs were found in his room. Henry was arrested on multiple trafficking and possession charges, having meth, weed, heroin, and more. When authorities got to the room, they discovered Ashley passed out after supposedly inhaling nitrous oxide through a balloon. The couple claimed that the suitcases containing the substances weren't theirs, but video footage from hotel surveillance cameras showed them carrying the bags, proving them wrong. Henry and Fargo took a plea deal in order to steer clear of hard jail time. Instead, the two will undergo counseling and make half-million-dollar donations to local substance treatment centers. They will also have to complete 250 hours of community service for their crimes. After leaving his company, Henry has since focused on a public life dedicated to philanthropy. He hopes that he'll be remembered for the good he's done, like passing Marcy's Law, a victim's rights bill, instead of his legal complications. Number 7. Crypto Kidnapping The rise of cryptocurrency in recent years has allowed many new millionaires to rise up through the world. However, one established Norwegian billionaire named Tom Hanken had a brush with the law back in 2018 for a scandal involving crypto and his wife. On Halloween of that year, Hagen called the police and said that he found a cryptic ransom letter in his home asking for $10 million worth of cryptocurrency. Police came to Hagen's secluded home to investigate the possible kidnapping situation, but discovered no obvious signs of forced entry on the property. They did, however, find plenty of evidence in the older couple's bedroom that suggested a struggle had happened. Initially, authorities dismissed this as the place Anne was captured. Further investigation revealed that Mr. Hagen may have faked the ransom situation entirely. Some believe he even killed his own wife. On April 28th, 2020, police arrested the billionaire as a suspect, but released him shortly after for lacking evidence. As of this year, Hagen is still a prime suspect, but no official charges have been set against him as the case continues. Number 6. Cameron Douglas The son of a celebrity turned to a life of crime in Manhattan after being cut off financially by his father. 
Cameron Douglas, son of award-winning actor Michael Douglas, was haunted by the pressure of his family's long-standing legacy and turned towards drugs for comfort. Cameron watched as his father had an affair and remarried while other family members constantly turned to nightlife and parties. He says seeing this play out from such a young age had a lasting negative effect on him. Drug addiction and using substances like liquid cocaine led Cameron to an angry, miserable life. His father tried to help him, going as far as hiring people to kidnap his son and take him to rehab, but that eventually was called off thanks to Cameron's aggressiveness. His behavior and attitude eventually led him down a dangerous road. After being cut off from his family's wealth, Cameron sought money from different sources. He started robbing people, in some cases at gunpoint, anything to fuel his addiction and escape his reality. However, crimes like this turned into a prison sentence, and in April 2010, he was given five years in prison for heroin possession and dealing. Thankfully, during his time, Cameron turned his life around, was released for good behavior, and is now pursuing an acting career like his father and grandfather. He's dedicated to spending time with his newborn son and three-year-old daughter as he continues to navigate a healthy lifestyle. Do you think Cameron's life of crime is truly behind him? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like the video so far, be sure to subscribe. Number 5. Harold Landry In February 2010, 38-year-old Lucy Landry's dead body was found in her neighbor's garden. Harold Landry, her husband, had stabbed her over 20 times before, leaving her remains near a bush in Perthshire, Worcestershire. As a wealthy crane designer, Harold initially claimed to be innocent, but it only took a little pushing for the 65-year-old to own up to his crimes. He said Lucy had threatened him with a knife, but this still doesn't explain why he stabbed her so many times. While in custody, he said that he had done everything imaginable for over 10 years to take care of his wife. He spoiled her with lavish gifts like diamond rings, a house, and more, but things eventually soured between the two. The couple who had met online were in a rough spot in their marriage. Both Harold and Lucy had started seeing other people, and Harold even done everything he could to make sure his wife wouldn't get money out of a divorce. In the past, Harold had been accused of shooting the man married to a woman he was seeing at the time, so violence isn't out of the question for him. After trial, Harold was found guilty of murdering his wife and was given a life sentence in prison for his cruelty. Number 4. Accusations In March 2019, a wealthy teenager named Joshua Molnar was accused of stabbing and killing his friend Yusuf Maki in Cheshire, England. The 17-year-old was cleared of the crime later on in court, but not before sparking viral outrage against him. The young boys had met at Manchester Grammar School, an elite private school that cost nearly 12,000 British pounds or 13,500 American dollars a year to attend. Youssef had won a scholarship for the school and became friends with Molnar while attending. Despite being cleared of the crime, Molnar was responsible for ending his friend's life. On March 29th, after a drug deal apparently went sideways, Molnar stabbed Youssef in the heart. He claimed self-defense in court, though, and was found not guilty of the murder. Molnar also lied to the police after the initial incident, saying that some, quote, black guys were involved in the killing. These remarks sparked outrage online, with many upset by this unnecessary, racially targeted comment looking to place blame on people who weren't involved. Even if he didn't go to jail for murder, the young man did have to serve out a 16-month detention order for lying to authorities and having a knife in public. Number 3. Bite the Hand That Feeds You Back in 2014, the son of wealthy real estate and tech mogul Ashton Sachs took an 18-hour road trip from his college in Seattle to his parents' home in Orange County, California. On February 9th, early in the morning, he entered their million-dollar property holding a loaded rifle. Once inside, he went to his parents' bedroom and sprayed them with bullets as they slept. After this, he also fired on his two younger siblings in the home, his 8-year-old brother and his 17-year-old sister. Ashton's brother Landon was left paralyzed from the injuries. Right after his crimes, Ashton jumped on a plane and went straight back to Seattle. He then came back to attend his mom and dad's funeral the following week. While there, he delivered a tearful eulogy, saying that he had a rocky relationship with his parents but still loved them very much. Eventually, evidence pointed authorities to Ashton as the primary suspect. When asked why he carried out the murders, he said that his parents were the reason he had depression and that he knew he was the least favorite child in the family. For two counts of murder and two attempted murders, Ashton Sachs will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Number 2. Barbecue Brawl In the South African country of Namibia, a barbecue went wrong after a drunken proposal. Harvey Bolter, a millionaire from the UK, shot and killed his employee, Gerhard Van Wick. Wick was in charge of taking care of Bolter's million-dollar property in the country and has lived there with his family for eight years. During this time, he developed a friendly and personal relationship with his boss. They were so close that Bolter was even building Wick his own home. 
home. While at the barbecue, things apparently went south when the millionaire said that Wick's daughter-in-law should give him sexual favors in return for building the house for them. These remarks caused a fight to break out between the men. Bolter threatened his employee with a gun and, while wrestling to get the gun away from him in order to de-escalate the situation, Wick was shot. He was rushed to the nearest hospital, which sadly was 100 miles or just about 160 kilometers away, and he died while en route to the hospital. Details on Bolter's sentencing have yet to be released. He made the $500,000 bail set for him and remains free until the court makes their decision. Even if he employed the man for eight years, Bolter had no right to ask for inappropriate favors from his daughter in exchange for a home he offered to build. Number 1. Mafia Men In February 2015, a millionaire businessman from China was put to death. He was found guilty as the head of a mafia-like gang full of killers and loan sharks. Before his arrest, 49-year-old Lu Han was worth almost six and a half billion dollars as the chairman of the Hanlong Group, and he wasn't scared to show off his wealth. Insiders report that he owned hundreds of expensive luxury vehicles and regularly bribed local officials to do his bidding. On top of his gang connections, Han was also tied to many illegal gambling facilities across the country. Years of crime made Han and his brother Lu Wei grow careless. In 2009, they got attention after sending out orders for three men, including a feuding gang boss, to be killed. This would be the last straw. After a crackdown on corruption by the Chinese president Xi Jinping, Han and his brother Liu Wei were arrested. As part of their punishment, they were stripped of political rights and told to give up all their financial assets. Officially, Han's charges included murder, selling firearms, and much more. Despite appealing for another opinion on the case, Han was ultimately found guilty and executed for his corrupt crimes. Number 10. Rich Pete in 2019, 54-year-old businessman Peter Morgan, who owned a castle, a windmill, an army tank, and kept an AK-47 in his office, was found guilty of killing his favorite escort, 25-year-old Georgina Simons, who called him Rich Pete. Morgan paid the former burlesque dancer and single mom around $12,500 a month to be his exclusive mistress after suffering a depressing midlife crisis. Their arrangement collapsed when Morgan became obsessive and controlling. He reduced Georgina's allowance when she stopped answering his calls. He even bugged her home because he was convinced she was trying to blackmail him. And she was. Georgina threatened to show the multimillionaire's wife intimate photos of him with her and other sugar babies. She also threatened to tell Morgan's family how she had met him if he didn't go along with her demands. This was enough to push Morgan over the edge. He strangled Georgina to death with twine at her bungalow in Leon Martin, South Wales. Her legs were bound with tape to fit in the trunk of his white Porsche Cayenne, which he used to transport her to a forested area close to his castle. Georgina was reported missing after failing to pick up her daughter from school. Police soon discovered her body, and their investigation led them to Peter Morgan. He was taken into custody, but released on bond. Not being able to handle what he had done, Morgan took his own life. Number 9. Arm Candy in 2019, Russian Instagram influencer Ekaterina Karaglonava had the world at her feet as a travel blogger with thousands of followers watching her fabulous life. But her life was cut short when her landlord discovered her body stuffed inside a suitcase with her throat slit in a Moscow apartment. The 24-year-old social media star had recently graduated as a doctor and was juggling her studies around her many extravagant vacations. And who was supporting this lifestyle? Her sugar daddy, of course. 33-year-old Maxim Garayev had been giving Ekaterina money for years in return for being his arm candy. But when Ekaterina wanted to call off their arrangement, Maxim wasn't happy. Maxim went to her apartment to try and change her mind. She told him no again and said it didn't matter how much money he threw at her, she was over the situation. She also told him he was bad in bed, which infuriated him, and Maxim lost control. He stabbed her in the neck and stripped her naked before folding her body into a small enough shape to cram into a suitcase. Upon investigation, security footage showed Russian police that Maxim entered Ekaterina's apartment with a suitcase and left without one. When questioned, Maxim, who was full of guilt, confessed to the murder. He is currently serving a nine-year prison sentence. Number 8. Sugar Mule Melina Roberge, a young Canadian model, became obsessed with her image at a young age. She figured the best way to appear like she was living her best life on social media was to get a sugar daddy to pay for her life of luxury. She met a mysterious older man in a Montreal restaurant in early 2015 and became swept up in a world of late-night partying and expensive dinners. In May 2016, the mystery man who ran, quote, a successful online business venture offered her an all-expenses-paid trip to Morocco and told her she could earn a lot of money as an escort. In an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, Melina said, I met a lot of people whom I understood to be friends and associates of my sugar daddy. 
but they discussed an option of making money on a cruise ship by playing some role in a drug importation. I was not interested and told them, she said, so Melina returned to her day job. Not long after returning to a normal life, her sugar daddy came to her with a watered-down proposal for her to join others on a luxury cruise around the world on which several million dollars worth of cocaine would be shipped. He told her that she wouldn't have to do anything but enjoy herself, and it was an offer she couldn't resist, traveling to exotic destinations and taking pictures of her, her followers online. But nothing turned out the way she wanted it to. Australian authorities caught up with the ship, which was docked in Sydney in August 2016, and found the drugs. 24-year-old Melina Roberge was arrested, and she pleaded guilty for importing nearly 66 pounds, or just about 30 kilograms of cocaine, worth up to $21.5 million, the largest drug shipment ever found on a cruise liner to Australia. She was sentenced to eight years in prison. Number seven, psychotic breakdown. In 2012, a Manhattan jury found Renato Siabra, a 23-year-old Portuguese former model, guilty of second-degree murder after he brutally killed and castrated his sugar daddy and lover, 65-year-old Portuguese journalist Carlos Castro. Castro met Renato when the then-aspiring model competed on a Portuguese reality show. Castro showered his boy toy with money and gifts and helped him advance his modeling career with trips to New York and London. But while the two were staying in Manhattan's Intercontinental Hotel together, Castro saw Renato flirting with women. According to trial testimony, he confronted the younger man, broke off the relationship, and made arrangements to cut their trip short. Renato screamed at Castro in the lobby, quote, I'm not gay anymore, before the two went into their room to continue their argument. The defense claims Renato had a psychotic breakdown. Dr. Jeffrey Singer testified in court that it was insanity that led Renato to beat Carlos with a computer screen and stomp him to death before cutting off his testicles with a corkscrew and wearing them as a bracelet. In court, Renato proved he was crazy by saying, he was still breathing in a very heavy way. I was thinking he was the devil. How could he still be breathing? I was afraid he was going to wake up and kill me, so I had to continue to beat him. Renato later told doctors, the power of the monster was in his balls. If I cut these, he will lose all the power. After Castro stopped moving and making any more noises, Renato told paramedics that he heard voices reassuring him that everything would be all right, didn't have to call 911. Renato Siabra now faces a minimum of 15 years in prison for second-degree murder. Number 6 Call Girl Killer In 2013, 27-year-old Alex Tishelman was working as a top-dollar escort and fetish model. She met Timothy Hayes, a wealthy Google executive and married father of five, on a sugar daddy website called Seeking Arrangements. The two had an ongoing sexual relationship in exchange for money. Their relationship had also included mutual drug use. On the morning of November 23, 2013, Hayes was found dead aboard his 50-foot or just about 15-meter private yacht in the Santa Cruz Harbor. Alex had accompanied Hayes that morning for a fun day on the water, but the boat never left the harbor. Surveillance footage from the dock showed Hayes kissing Alex right before she injected him with a lethal dose of heroin. Hayes suffered an overdose from the substance, and as he began to die, Alex sipped her wine, gathered her belongings, and walked away. She never called 911. Santa Cruz police arrested Alex early on July 4th on charges of murder, prostitution, and destroying evidence. Her bail was set at $1.5 million. Why do you think Alex decided to murder her sugar daddy? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Number 5. Burning the Evidence On June 28, 2019, the remains of 23-year-old Mackenzie Luke were discovered in the backyard of Ayula Ajayi. Police in Utah have charged 31-year-old former U.S. Army IT specialist Ajayi with murder and burning the woman's body after DNA evidence revealed that the corpse belonged to the missing college senior. Mackenzie, a nursing student at the University of Utah, went missing on June 17th and is thought to have sent her last text messages to Ajayi. She was last spotted arriving at Salt Lake City International Airport when she boarded a cab to meet a man at a park around 2 a.m. On June 18th and 19th, Ajayi's neighbors smelled gasoline and witnessed him burning something in his yard. They called police, who got a search warrant that resulted in the discovery of a freshly dug area on his property, which is the same spot where he was reported burning something. A forensic examination of the burn location was done, which resulted in the discovery of various charred artifacts consistent with Mackenzie's personal possessions. Other burnt debris was discovered which has now been forensically determined to be female human tissue, Mackenzie's tissue. Mackenzie Lee reportedly used online dating to find sugar daddies over the age of 35 and recently bragged to her girlfriends about two such relationships before she was killed. She also offered advice to other aspiring sugar babies in a post made three months prior to a private Facebook group posting that she had some experience in seeking arrangements online. Ajayi was detained after the SWAT team raid on his apartment complex on charges of aggravated murder, aggravated kidnapping, desecration of a body, and obstruction of justice. Number 4. Fake Ads 
19-year-old Christina Percoto answered an online ad for a governess with a model appearance, which authorities suspect is used by males looking for hookups. Christina is reported to have posted explicit images of herself on a website where women can meet sugar daddies. On December 21, 2017, Christina allegedly responded to an ad posted by guys seeking sexual services and went alone to an interview at a residence outside of town. When she did not return home from university that day, her father reported her missing. A large police and volunteer search was launched and her body was discovered two days later near Siberia's largest city. Investigators determined the possibility that the men planned to exploit her in a neurotic photo shoot. Her naked body was wrapped in cling film and placed into a zip-up bag, which was found on snow-covered land near a reservoir on the River Ob near Novosibirsk. Police said she was sexually assaulted, and they have arrested two men, both 28 years old, on suspicion of her murder. One of the two culprits had even been suspected in a different sexual assault case the previous year, but that case had been closed without conviction. Christina is believed to have recently fought with her father, who told her she should be more modest. On the day she vanished, her phone was turned on till about 8 p.m., but she didn't answer it. In light of the incident, authorities warned young ladies to be wary of ads for cleaning or domestic help that are actually placed by guys looking for sex. Christina's death sparked a massive outpouring of grief on social media. Number 3. Toxic Sugar Baby 34-year-old Jennifer Morrissey testified for the first time on January 24, 2019 in her trial for allegedly killing her sugar daddy, Michael McNew. McNew was shot dead in August 2017 at his Washington Crossing home, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Prosecutors stated in opening arguments that Jennifer was taken care of by the pharmaceutical executive, but the relationship began to deteriorate after four years together. The duo who met at a strip club where Jennifer worked apparently fought via text messages in the hours before McNew's murder. McNew threatened to shoot his lover in the conversations, and Jennifer responded by saying that she would gut him as if she was field dressing a deer. According to the prosecution, she shot McNew between the eyes before fleeing the house, only to return hours later to stage the crime scene as a robbery. The defense, on the other hand, claims the shot was accidental because the two wrestled over the handgun when Jennifer returned to pick up some of her belongings. Jennifer's lawyer claimed she went into panic mode after the shooting because she didn't feel authorities would believe her version of events. Jennifer has been charged with murder, burglary, possession of criminal instruments, and tampering with or falsifying physical evidence. Number 2. Take the Money and Run In June 2021, police in Lagos, Nigeria arrested a female college student for murdering a wealthy media executive. 21-year-old Chidnama Aduara Ojukwu met 50-year-old Michael Usifu Ataga on her sugar daddy website. Over a four-month span, the two engaged in sexual acts and Michael gave her money. They also regularly drank alcohol and used drugs together. Super TV CEO Michael was found dead inside an Airbnb. On the night of his death, Chinnama and her sugar daddy were high on drugs when she fatally stabbed him over a misunderstanding. The misunderstanding was that Michael demanded she sleep with him, but she was tired and didn't want to. Chinnama claims that she attempted to leave, but Michael had locked the door and hid the key. He pulled her back and the struggle ensued. That's when she grabbed a kitchen knife and snapped him several times. Self-defense would have been an easy out for Chinema had she not left the Airbnb love nest and stolen Michael's wallet. She went to an ATM and withdrew a large sum of money from his account before she went on the run. Police arrested her nine days later at her parents' house. Police believe Chinema conspired with accomplices to kill the wealthy suspect and rob him. The other suspects are still at large. Number 1. Death Note in December 2018, Lydia Dupra posted a photo of herself with the deceased man telling her followers that she wished he'd never met him. The description of the image read that her sugar daddy, Brad, had died exactly one year ago. He was 47 years old when he died of a heart attack and untreated diabetes. She had an extremely toxic relationship with him and ultimately wished she had never met him. She went on to say that he was so nasty that she had trouble recalling a positive memory of him. She continued to state that he purchased her first pair of Louboutins, her first Birkin, and her one and only racing horse. Lydia, also known as the Home Mentor, went on to say that Brad had removed her from his will before his death. She added in a post that she still doesn't forgive him for pulling her out of the will. She then confessed that she had been living a double life this whole time with the person he had believed was her gay bodyguard and that she is also an author and serial entrepreneur. She concluded by asking him to call it a draw and stop haunting her. The post went viral on Instagram, receiving over 10,000 likes and nearly 2,000 comments. Number 10. Stephanie Scalaro A famous Instagram model and heiress to the fortune of Francesco Scalaro, the mining tycoon from Italy, made headlines in 2020. This was the beginning of COVID, and as everyone remembers, most of the world went into lockdown, with hundreds of thousands of people getting sick. 
almost everyone was doing their part to stop the spread of disease. Well, everyone except Stephanie Scalaro. Instead, she decided to advertise COVID glam packages over social media. The service offered appointments for lip fillers at LA Beauty Dolls, her spa in London. At the time, though, the country she operated in wasn't allowing any services of this kind to be performed during the pandemic. When confronted for accepting a client, who turned out to be an undercover reporter, a spokesperson for the young woman said that Stephanie believed the prime minister was about to announce more lax regulations, so she didn't think it would be such a big deal. This wasn't the only time Scalaro came under fire, either. In 2019, the heiress almost received jail time. She had over $34,000 worth of endangered snakeskin products shipped to her and was selling the items on one of her websites, SS Python. Stephanie was charged with four counts of selling specimens imported illegally and more. The judge overseeing her case claimed she was utterly self-centered and had likely been given everything she'd ever wanted in life. Number 9. Tyson The worldwide chicken industry is worth billions and billions of dollars, and one of the major players in the market is Tyson Foods Company. They offer all kinds of goods from frozen chicken nuggets or sausage. The company is even a main supplier of McDonald's products that people enjoy internationally. The heir to this mega fortune is none other than 32-year-old John R. Tyson. But growing up with all the money you could ever ask for didn't exactly have positive effects on the man's maturity. In November 2022, John was arrested in Arkansas when a young woman randomly found him passed out in her bedroom late one night. She was rightfully terrified by the strange man in her bed, so she called the police. When officers got there, they had to yell at him to wake up. One of them shouted at him, saying he wasn't in his own house. Oh, and guess what? He was practically naked. The only thing covering him was a tiny pair of shorts. Tyson didn't listen to the cops' initial requests, so he was pulled off the pillow and placed in handcuffs. As they led him out of the home, he sheepishly asked them, Can I go pee real quick? A few weeks later, the CFO issued an apology for his actions. He said that he was incredibly embarrassed by what he'd done and that he took full responsibility for everything that happened. He was charged with public intoxication as well as criminal trespassing. Number 8. Couch In June 2013, a 16-year-old teenager was driving in Burleson, Texas. Ethan Couch was going at least 70 miles an hour at the time and had also been drinking. On top of the alcohol, Reports indicate that he also had recently taken Valium as well as marijuana. As you can probably guess, this combination didn't end well. The young man soon crashed head-on into another vehicle, resulting in the deaths of four individuals. The resulting court case went global, sparking all kinds of discussions. Ethan's defense team had a licensed psychologist testify in his favor. The professional said that Mr. Couch had a condition known as affluenza. He went on to say that this was sometimes observed in wealthy young adults and that it caused them to not feel guilty or be able to tell the difference between what's right or wrong. As wild as that all sounds, this argument worked in the boy's favor. After killing four people, he received no jail time, just a 10-year probation. During this time, he had to abstain from any and all drugs and alcoholic beverages. Along with this, Ethan had to attend rehab. This lax sentence was met with public outcry. Many believed he should have gotten a much harsher punishment. A few years later, footage popped up on social media suggesting that Couch had broken the rules of his probation. He and his mother Tanya tried to escape persecution in Mexico, but were soon deported back to the States. For violating his sentence, the young man, who was now legally an adult, was finally given a more severe penalty. The court ordered that he serve 180 days behind bars for every victim that lost their life. In total, he spent 720 days locked up. Number 7. Hamza Javed A man on a motorcycle was almost crushed to death after being sped over by an expensive jeep. On June 6, 2021, in Lahore, Pakistan, Hamza Javed hit the unsuspecting cyclist and left his vehicle at the scene of the crime. Earlier that day, the wealthy and spoiled man had demanded that a luxury hotel give him a room. He claimed to be an officer at some kind of intelligence agency, but soon got angry when the hotel denied him. After a heated argument, 
The staff called the police to help them calm the situation. Once there, officers took Hamza into custody along with his car. On the way to the station, Mr. Javed apparently made multiple threats to the cops sitting next to him and even said he'd kidnap the officer to get what he wanted. During all of this, a second patrol car was following the vehicle when it crashed over the motorcycle. In total, three individuals were hurt in the accident. While everyone was reeling from what had happened, Hamza escaped. Before long, the Jeep also went up in flames. It's unclear if the suspect was ever caught, but it's obvious he felt no remorse for the people he hurt. Number 6. Sasha Sobani The son of a former Iranian diplomat has come under fire in recent years while building an impressive following on social media. 33-year-old Sasha Sobani often posts photos of himself online showcasing his wealth through privet, gorgeous women, expensive alcohol, and more. Earlier in his life, he got into trouble while living in Iran after organizing illegal raves. Sasha was actually arrested for these kinds of activities and given a prison sentence, but through his many connections and money, he was able to escape the country. In 2019, the young man moved to Spain where his presence on Instagram and other sites started to steadily grow. He also started making music, which turned out to be fairly lucrative. With 2.6 million followers, Sabani had a voice that couldn't be silenced easily. He used this influence to his advantage by openly expressing his critical views of the government in his home country. Specifically, he scrutinized the lack of freedom given to their people. The country didn't like this one bit, so they sent a request to have the man extradited back to be punished. In their bid, they claimed Mr. Sabani was running multiple illegal gambling websites and needed to be properly punished under Iranian law. Sasha says that if Spain actually sends him back, it's very likely he'll be killed or tortured in Iran. While this rich kid has a history of misbehaving, he definitely doesn't deserve that. What are your thoughts on this story? Number 5. Riley Higgins In August 2022, 23-year-old Riley Higgins was accused of armed robbery. The young man happens to be the heir of a vast multi-million dollar property empire. He's been suspected of entering a service station in Sydney with an air rifle before asking the cashier to hand over money. According to the staff working at the time, the robber was incredibly polite while committing the crime. Higgins has tried to make a name for himself in the rap scene for years, but has fallen short of fame. Videos he's uploaded to social media sites show him making up lyrics over stereotypical hip hop beats. And we'll be honest, despite claiming he's a gangster, the man is really not that good at rapping. Perhaps that's why he turned to crime though, to give himself some kind of street cred. It must have been difficult to paint himself as a hardened musician after attending an elite $40,000 a year private school all his life. The robbery wasn't that lucrative either. After all was said and done, the thief only made out with a measly $400. That's hardly enough money to risk jail time over. Who knows what was going through this rich kid's head? Number 4. Cameron Terrell After being acquitted for the murder of Justin Holmes, a wealthy teenager from Los Angeles was once again arrested. Cameron Terrell was cleared of charges in July 2018. Initially, he was suspected as a killer when he and some friends, who were apparently associated with a local gang, drove near Holmes and his buddies. Cameron's group then got out of their vehicle, argued with the young men, shot Justin, then escaped. Terrell happened to be driving the getaway car. After his arrest, the young man's rich family paid the $5 million bail to get him out. He was later cleared of murder, but investigators found evidence in the case to bring other charges against him. Terrell frequently posted photos of himself making gang signs. In court, the teen said that he knew his friends were gang affiliated, but he had no idea they planned to kill someone that night. Since the new charges have been brought against him, Cameron has pleaded not guilty. It's difficult to find recent information surrounding this story, but in March of 2019, he was placed in lockdown while the case proceeded. Number 3. Alexandra Jackson The daughter of famous country star Alan Jackson was arrested in August 2013. At the time, Alexandra Jane Jackson was 20 years old, but when police pulled her and some friends over one night in Nashville, it was obvious she'd been drinking. Thankfully, she wasn't the one driving the luxury Range Rover and was just a passenger in the vehicle. They were stopped after dangerously speeding past and tailgating other drivers on the road. 
When the officer asked a few questions like they routinely do, Jackson became enraged. She tried mentioning her dad's name as if that was going to do anything, but the police were not shaken one bit. Soon, the young woman got out of the car and hit one of the cops straight in his chest. She was quickly placed in handcuffs while trying to fight her way out of the situation. At the jail, Alexandra told the booking agents that her father would be extremely upset if she was arrested and would do everything to get her out. A few hours later, she made the $35,000 bond bail and was released. This was not the first time a child of Alan Jackson had broken the law either. The year before in 2012, another one of the singer's daughters was charged for a DUI. Looks like being spoiled and entitled runs in the family. Number 2. Track Palin Sarah Palin is a well-known politician from Alaska who's made a name for herself as a former governor and book author. The woman's net worth is likely well over a million dollars, but it seems all this wealth and attention hasn't boded well for her son Track. In 2018, the 29-year-old man was arrested after police responded to a residential disturbance late one night in Wasilla, Alaska. He had apparently assaulted a woman at the home and yanked her phone out of her hands when she tried calling for help. Once officers got to the scene, Track was also belligerent and resisted arrest. Just one year before this, he spent a couple nights in jail for an unrelated domestic violence charge that happened in Sarah's home. She said that her son had pushed his father to the ground before violently beating him with multiple shots to the head. He also broke a window in the rampage. Track has had difficulties with past girlfriends. In 2016, he was once again arrested after pulling a loaded gun on his girlfriend at the time. After so much unnecessary violence, the man's sister has come forward, expressing disappointment in her brother. He's an adult and makes his own decisions, she said, but sometimes the decisions of others are way out of line. Number 1. Joshua Molner a teenager from a prominent private school in the UK has been cleared of murder charges after claiming self-defense. In 2018, 17-year-old Joshua Molner stabbed and killed his own friend, Yusuf Mackey. The boys had gotten into an argument over drugs, when according to Molner, the victim suddenly pulled a knife out. The resulting fight between the young men quickly turned into horror as Joshua stood over Yusuf as he bled out. During the trial, it was brought to the attention of the judge and jury that Molner had an odd fascination with knives and weapons. It seemed like he had some kind of sick fantasy of living out a gangster dream. When push came to shove, though, he couldn't handle the heat. In a statement to the news, Molner's mother, Stephanie, expressed sympathy for the parents of the victim. She remained adamant that her son acted solely out of self-defense and would have never killed his friend in any other situation. Stephanie went on to say that Joshua was still heartbroken by the outcome and will have to live with the guilt and responsibility of his role in Yusuf's death for years to come. Thanks for watching today's video. What do you think about these spoiled rich kids? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time on Bad Badger.